Hi, uh, this is going to be a quick video where I just run through all the various reports uh, currently at the time of making this video available in Metric and just quickly explain how they are all generated. Uh, so to start with, I'm just on the dashboard here. Now I have a separate video uh, that you can find in the channel about customizing the dashboard. But what I'll actually do to start is click one of these to go through to a report. So I'm going to start here with the orders report. And, and basically what that does is look at all the orders you've had in the period and up the top right you can change the date period uh, being used and it charts them, gives you some KPIs about them and a whole bunch of different statistics. Uh, you can see here it has growth numbers. Now the growth numbers here are quite high uh, because we're comparing to a period where there weren't many sales. So we could change uh, up here from the last six months. You can use custom date and maybe we'll just make it from January to the end of March and now you can see the numbers are a little bit better because it's comparing it to the previous period of three months which are uh, well, 90 days which ends up being around October the 3rd to December 31st. If you want you can click that and change the period being used and also by clicking that it actually shows on the chart most of the charts it'll show the previous period overlap so you can see like how you've grown. Uh, by default, yeah, it is using the previous period, uh, but you can just click here to make it previous year, previous month, previous week, and you can also just choose a completely different period. Just clear that for now. I'm going to scroll down a bit, and you can see it kind of does a breakdown here of all the various stats. Uh, here's some more just averages, where it's average monthly grows, monthly orders. Below that, we have new versus returning customers. So. Uh, how many customers, how many of these orders? So here we had 239 orders. How many of those came from new customers that had never made an order before and how many from returning who had made orders outside of this period at a previous time? And we can kind of see the stats for each of them. Um, over here we can see that returning customers have a higher average net. So that shows us that returning customers are spending more. We should spend more time focusing on them perhaps. And some other stats about them, the average order grows, um, how many orders, and it also shows you what percent it makes up of the total. Down here we have the orders group by status. Uh, so an interesting thing that I'm going to just touch on before we keep going. Uh, with these reports, uh, they're governed by a lot of settings that you have in metrics, so you can make sure these reports are exactly the numbers you want to see. So I'm just going to actually head over here. I'm going to click here to go to the report settings. And you have to be an admin of the store to see this. So if you can't find it, that's why. Just make sure someone on your team who's an admin does it or get them to give you admin access and you'll be able to see these report settings. But in here, you can uh, kind of customize how those reports are generated. The main one that everyone uh, asked me about and, and really uses a lot is the which order statuses should be excluded from reports setting. So the idea with this one, uh, you know, when you have orders in your store, they all have various statuses depending on what part of the order life cycle they're in. Uh, it could be that an order failed or cancelled. Those are the kinds of orders that you definitely don't want in your reports because they, didn't, they don't mean a sale. You didn't get any money for it. Um, by default, you might be wondering where refunded are. Refunded ones are already handled um, down here where we calculate the gross sales and net sales. We'll get to that in a second though. Uh, but yeah, with the order statuses, you can customize. So if you have custom order statuses, you can choose which ones should be included in reports and which ones you consider to be a failed or ignored, I suppose, ignored order. Uh, by default, it's going to exclude canceled, failed and pending orders. Uh, but optionally, you might say, OK, for us, on hold orders are not um, considered a sale. We don't want them in the reports. The only other thing I want to mention before I go back is that there is in this setting only include orders with a gross over zero dollars in order related reports. So when that's um, enabled and it is by default, an order you've had where the total was zero, so it could be an order where there was hundred percent coupon used or it could be a free product you sell, just so your numbers aren't skewed too much because metric has a few stats like the average order amount. Now, if you had a whole lot of orders that were zero dollars, that would mess up your average order numbers. So with this setting enabled, those orders won't be used in the reports. You can still find them in Metric, but uh, when it comes to actually looking at the report where it says you had a hundred orders in this period, those orders will be ignored. But if you want to include them, just uncheck that and they'll be in there. Uh, and also there is this little area here where it says based on these pages settings, your last month's stats would be. This is really useful if you just want to kind of change these and see how these numbers change um, to try to get them to be more what you had in mind but we will include processing and we will include on hold orders. And the other setting here is uh, just how net sales is calculated. 
refunds are always deducted to get net sales, but you might want to include taxes or include shipping. Totally up to you. Also down here, there are some date settings. So by default, Metrics is going to use the created date of an order for the report. Really, you probably want to keep it like this unless you have a reason to use the paid date or completed date. Sometimes the paid date and completed date don't get set. Um, also with the completed date, if you have orders that aren't completed, they're going to get excluded from reports if you choose that. So I recommend just keeping it as created date. Uh, but one of the things you may have noticed in that drop down before when we were choosing the dates, there are a whole bunch of different date ranges available to you. I know that they're not for everyone. So everyone has like different preferences of what date periods they want to look at. So you can use this setting here to choose the ones that are available to your whole team. So you only have to set this once. Everyone on the team using the store will be able to see the date range periods you've enabled here. So we might want to do last three months instead of manually selecting it like we did before. So now that I've done that, I'm going to go back to the reports here. Uh, just if I show you here now, you can see last three months is here. So we can just use that instead. Now we're looking at February to end of May. And great. All right, so now I'm going to head into the revenue report. So similar to the orders report, uh, the revenue report focuses more on actual revenue cash flow changes that happened in a period. The difference is quite minimal, but it can be significant and it can be a little confusing at first, but let me explain. With the revenue report, the main difference is that it looks at the sales in a period and it looks in the refunds in a period. Now, what that means is that uh, if we're looking here, February 1 to May 31, if we had um, an order that happened in January, of course, it would not be counted as a sale here. But if that order was later refunded in February, it will be deducted from the amount here. But if we were looking at the orders report, that activity won't have an impact on here because we're looking at the orders that were created in this period. So an order that was created in January but refunded in February is irrelevant here and won't be included. Uh, similarly, if we had an order perhaps that was on May 31st uh, and then on June 1st it was refunded, the refund will be reflected in here because there's no point giving you stats about the orders that happened in this period if we're not giving you the whole picture. While I'm back on the orders report, I am going to just continue where I left off and just show you a few of the other reports you're going to find within this report. Uh, so an interesting one here is the orders grouped by the payment method. Uh, similarly, there's also one for the orders grouped by uh, the billing country and state and also shipping country state. Now, all this data can be exported. You'll find a little export button at the top uh, for all of these. So you can click that if you want to get a CSV export of this data. And another thing that is interesting is that if you're looking at this, and you're saying, OK, like what were the four orders that had a billing state of Alaska? You can actually just click on the four. I'm just giving it a moment to load and it's going to take us to the orders page and apply uh, some segments for us here. So we can see the exact orders that it was talking about. It's quite cool. It's going to go back now to the report. And we'll just finish it off um, down here where there are a few others that might be of value to you. Uh, the item count distribution, which looks at how many uh, items there are on average in orders. So you can see, okay, most of our orders have like three, four, five items in it. Um, we do have a couple with 12, a couple with one. Uh, similarly, the order value. So the most, most orders tend to be in the 120 to 150 range. Uh, down here, we can see the spend by day. So we can see, okay, um, Tuesdays are great for us and Fridays and how many orders we're getting on each of those days and also the spend by hour which depending on your store can be really valuable to find out when customers are actually shopping with you. Uh, if I go back to the revenue report and I know I'm jumping around a little bit but hopefully you're following. Uh, another interesting part here is just the revenue breakdown where it looks at the, the data that's forming this chart and gives it to you in a table format so you can kind of see each here we have month, um, the data that happened in that period, the net sales, and you can export it. Now, if I change the group by up here to be week, so I want to look at week by week, the revenue breakdown will also update to use weeks. I'm going to go over to the refunds report now. Now, I don't think this store has had any refunds in this period, so it's going to look a little empty. Um, but basically what this report does, it looks at refunds made for the orders that were created in this period up here. So not refunds that happened between February 1 and May 31st, because the time that a refund is happening, when the actual refund takes place, normally isn't as relevant as when the order that actually is being refunded happened. Because I think most stores typically tend to do their refunds 
perhaps all at once on a Monday, if they had some over the weekend. So knowing that there were 10 refunds on the Monday doesn't really give us the whole picture. It's more interesting to know when did those uh, orders that were being refunded actually happen. So that's what the dates up here indicate. And if we actually had some refunds here, which is great that this store doesn't have any, we'll be able to see how much was refund and how many of the orders in that period were refunded, the refund rate, and um, the time between when an order was created and when an order was refunded. So it can be really interesting to see, okay, customers normally have the product for a month, then they're requesting a refund. That's really interesting. Move over to the devices report now. Again, this is a test store, so uh, the numbers can be a bit weird. Uh, it is all just like randomly generated orders. Uh, but we can see here that there are 210 orders uh, for desktop, 11 for mobile, how many actual uh, customers, unique users, that's uh, through the integration with Google Analytics, how many users actually viewed the site. Uh, and we can see, okay, there were 78 users that uh, viewed the store with Windows and 112 orders. Again, numbers are <laughs> all for a test store, so they don't really make sense because 78 people making 112 orders. Technically it's possible, but very unlikely. Uh, so it's an operating system breakdown, and then we have a browser's uh, breakdown for orders. And you've got a nice pie chart on the side. Interesting thing uh, to note, you can, most of these charts can be downloaded. So of course you could just take a screenshot, which can be really easy to do, uh, but you can also just right click and save the image as. Move on to the sources report. Again, this one isn't gonna have much info, so I'm gonna actually do a separate video kind of walking you through how it all works. Uh, but basically it just gives you data about the orders, like where they're coming from in your store. The only disadvantage here is that WooCommerce doesn't record this data. So you actually have to, you only have this data available for orders made after you set up metric because metrics taking note of where customers come from um, and then how many orders they made and everything like that. Up the top, you can change it. So instead of using the referring site, it uses UTM parameters if you're using those. And then you can actually click through a, re a referring site and see which links exactly. So here's an order I made, I clicked through from this link uh, and then I went and made an order so we can see it metric sent the app metric app sent the order um, of course you can also click the order number and we can actually see the exact orders that match so we'll go back to the reports now and then we're going to go to the forecast report uh, the forecast report is interesting uh, depending on your store it can be a little bit off so forgive me if it's like that but most of the time it will work pretty well but basically how it works is it looks at the sales over your last I believe it's the last six months um, and the growth you've had over that period to try forecast what your growth will be in the future. By default here, we're using a linear growth method, which is just taking initial sales of 11,000. It's detecting the monthly growth is at 14.7. Uh, again, it might look a little off. It's a demo store, <laughs> um, but then it'll plot that over time and give you an idea of your total sales, sales per month. You can also change it to be exponential, which will use a growth rate, which is <laughs> quite high here. But the cool thing is that we can say, okay, this doesn't really make sense. My growth rate, I know it's around 15%. Uh, and you could also say, well, I know I want to start at my sales at 10,000. So you can just customize these numbers to kind of get them to be more uh, what you're looking for. And then uh, order volume, again, really high numbers, switch back to linear, uh, and the new customers forecast. Move on to the customers report now. It's gonna look at the dates top right and say, okay, how many customers joined in this period? Uh, an interesting thing uh, to note that metric does is when you have orders that are made by guests, so users that didn't register an account or weren't logged in, they just checked out as a guest, metric still counts them as a customer because of course they are still a customer. Uh, if that guest then goes and makes different orders um, under the same email, Metrics going to automatically link those together and know that that individual customer made four guest orders. So these numbers are going to be great even if you have a lot of orders by guest. So with the new customers report, it's showing us, okay, uh, between February 1 and May 31st, there were 255 new customers, so customers that joined in that period. If it was a guest, it's the first order they made. Uh, they went on to make 300 orders and they spent $60,000 gross. Um, great. So also here we've got Google Analytics integrated so we can see the number of unique visitors in this period and the conversion rate, again, really, really high for this test store. We can see some stats here like the average lifetime value, the average order value, how many orders customers are making over their lifetime on average and the lifetime items. Now, an interesting thing to note is that it's looking 
okay, so over the entire lifetime. So it's looking at the customers that joined this period and saying over their whole lifetime, even if they made orders outside this period in June or July, um, it's looking at those orders to perform these tests. Also here we can see uh, the customers group by role. So administrator is our account. We can see the orders made by that role. If you have multiple roles on your store, this is really interesting to see like if you had wholesale customers, uh, how many orders that they making and how many customers do you have that fall under that role, uh, comparing like the average lifetime value. So it could be really interesting to see. Of course, the wholesale uh, customers have a high average lifetime value. And similar to the orders report before, we have customers grouped by the billing country and state, uh, shipping country, state, city, zip. Uh, we can click show all the results to show them all. And then this is a really fun one down the bottom where you can see a heat map of new customers from this period. So you can see, okay, wow, we have quite a lot of customers over here in Europe. We can click through and see, okay, there's 30 here. Um, and keep going through till we find, you know, where customers are coming from. Uh, and if I go far in, we can actually click on that and see the individual customers in their locations. Click there and to go to their profiles. So it's a pretty cool uh, little feature. The customer retention report, report uh, similar to the customer's report, it's looking at customers that joined in the period up the top right. But what it's actually doing is giving you an idea of the customers in that period, how many orders they're making over their lifetime, how often they're coming back in. So there's one-time customers and how often they're coming back and being a returning customer. And interesting like to see the averages between them here for this test store, it's the exact same. And then we can also see like the time between orders. So not just giving you a rough number and saying, okay, on average it's four weeks between orders, but how many customers are matching each of that? So there are in weeks, um, a lot of customers here that are eight, but then there's also some that are ordering one week between. You can change that if you want to look at days or months as well. Down here we can see the items bought of the lifetime of the customer. So up here we have orders made over the lifetime, but this one's looking more at actual items in the orders. How many, so here there's 48 customers that uh, bought four items in their lifetime. And then over here, some high spending customers that haven't ordered in 30 days. Now you might be wondering, okay, when is it looking at orders for, for these customers? So by default, it's gonna look at the lifetime of orders. So just as, as an example, if I change this and say February 1 to 28, it's looking at the customers that joined that period over their lifetime. So even the orders they made in March or April or any time after that. Um, but you might wanna say, okay, but I just wanna know my retention within the first 30 days. So if you click that little lifetime button there, you can change it to be 30 days, we can make it 50 days, really up to you. So it's only gonna look at orders made in the first 50 days since they joined. I'm gonna move on to the compare products report now. Uh, this is a really fun one that just lets you compare products side by side. So I can choose like the blue color and then the red color. And we can see side by side how they go um, on the chart. Again, if we wanted to download this one, all we have to do is right click and we can save the image as. If you're, um, you've got Google Analytics integrated, it'll actually also show you here the conversion rate and how many people viewed the product. Uh, since this is just a test store, I do have it integrated, but these aren't really getting views, these uh, test products. So that's why you're not seeing the numbers there. But if you've connected Google Analytics, you're gonna have all those stats in here. Uh, some of the other reports you can see down here are all subscription related. I'm gonna be showing those in a separate video. Uh, so if you have a subscription store, check that out. If not, don't worry about it. So I think I've covered everything here, uh, but if you have any questions or want to check anything, just let me know. You can leave a comment or message me on the live chat. Uh, it really is a lot better when you've got real data in there. So real orders, not fake ones like this. And of course, when it's your own data and not uh, a store that I'm showing you. So I really encourage you to connect your store and check metric out. Uh, and thanks for watching.